this session is over. If you require assistance, please speak to a member of staff, and in the event of an emergency, please follow the directions of the stewards. We ask that you always keep your personal belongings with you, and the use of photography and filming is not allowed. Digital programs can be found at lso.co.uk forward slash programs. Please turn any notifications to silent. Thank you, and enjoy the concert. St. Luke's. Now it might be really raining out there but we've got some sunshine for you in here because we have Julian and Francisco. Can we give them a huge warm welcome? And we are travelling to South America. Oh, the dream. Almost all of the music today is from over there. The first piece however is from Paganini. Now when we hear the word Paganini, many of us probably think about this amazing violinist. So Paganini is still regarded as being one of the greatest violinists who ever lived. And the truth is he was actually, he was kind of the first one who was good at marketing and good at selling himself. Not to say he wasn't a good, good violinist, he really was, but it was a whole package with him. And he had the lifestyle as well. He had, you know, women and affairs and gambling and illness and all the rest of it. He would make a great Netflix drama. But the secret about Paganini is that he was equally skilled on the guitar. Apparently he was an amazing guitarist, but he never played his guitar in public. He called it his constant private companion. And he wrote 18 sonatas for guitar and violin, and we're going to hear the first one of them now. So this is Paganini's sonata for guitar and violin, number one.
on a metaphorical plane and travel to Colombia. Our first composer from over there is called Lucas Saboya. And we're going to hear, or if you're reading the program notes, that name, Saboya, a lot, because they're involved in some way with a lot of the pieces today. Lucas and his two brothers are absolutely passionate about promoting Colombian music. And between the three of them, they've written dozens and dozens of pieces over the last 20 years and arranged even more. So the first piece from Lucas Saboya is called Olive Colored Eyes.
happy on such a horrible rainy day. Uh, our next piece sidesteps us to Venezuela and a composer called Heraclio Fernandez. I'm sure I pronounced that wrong, but anyway, Fernandez. Now, he achieved the composer's dream. He wrote a piece that is so beloved by the Venezuelan people that it rippled throughout the culture. And Venezuelans probably don't realize that anybody ever actually wrote this piece because it's quite simply always been there. It's completely beloved. It's a fast waltz and it's called Devil on the Loose. And it was actually written in 1888. It was published after Fernandez's death. So he would have had no idea of its popularity. And then, and you won't believe it once you've heard it, in the 1970s, somebody put lyrics to it and it made its way into the pop charts. So it is called Devil on the Loose.
imagine singing along to that? Uh, I should just say hello to our online audience who have joined us uh, online and remind you all that this concert will remain online. So if you want to watch it again with a glass of wine, because you know that's what this music wants, um, you can do so afterwards. And just say to all of you that there will be a chance to ask questions a bit later on. So if you're online, start typing now. And kids, if you want to ask a question, you've got to get ready to shout at us. So have a little think if you want to ask a question. Uh, we return to Lucas Saboya now for our next piece, which is called Bella Vista, which means beautiful view. <laughs>
next composer is truly international, born in Colombia, raised in Africa and Asia, and now lives in the USA. And on his website, he says that he has all of these inspirations from around the world, different languages, different people, different art forms, but all he wants to do is speak through music. His name is Santiago Bernal Montana, and he speaks very well through this next piece, which is called Say It Again. And it is a pasillo, which is a type of Colombian slow waltz.
this is the point of the concert where if you've got any questions for either of our performers, now's your chance, but wait for a microphone to come somewhere near. And if you're in the balcony, you're going to have to shout. But I'm going to leave the balcony for a while and look at the screen where we have, you both sound so good. Um, I didn't know it was going to say that, says Yashbi from Chennai. Uh, how many times have you worked together? I'll ask you that, Francisco. Uh, we, we have been working for the last five years, maybe. Every now and then we have uh, some projects together. We join, have a, a good time, and, and do some beautiful Colombian music. There we go. So five years. It takes five years to sound that good. Actually, it takes a lot longer than that. Um, has anybody got a question down in this bit of the hall? Just put your hand up, and I'll get a microphone to you. You're right at the front, so you can have micro my microphone, mm -hmm. but don't take it off me, because I get very sad if you do that. <laughs> okay, go for it. Do you see pictures when you play music? What a beautiful question. I'm going to ask Huli on that one, and then I'll come back. Do you see pictures when you play music? Yeah, sometimes, yes. I see. With this music, I remember kind of home, pictures, uh, landscapes, and, and it's very helpful, very connects very well with the music, so yeah. Do you see pictures when you play, Francisco? Come on the side. Yeah, it's all sort of different pictures, like can be like a, a, a person or, or just some colors, a bit more abstract pictures, but there's always a, a nice image in, the, in my head. What a beautiful, I think you get a round of applause for a really beautiful question. <laughs> It's a really beautiful question. Nobody's ever asked us that before, and it's such a lovely question. Right, let's go to my school groups up there. I'm going to go right there. You've got your hand up. Yeah, you. You're going to have to shout. Well, you don't have a question, so I'm going to go over to you on the end of the back. Yeah, you. Brilliant question. How many years have you been playing music for, Francisco? Uh, 30, 35. No, no. Which is weird because you're only 22, aren't you? So that's <laughs> yeah. really difficult. How many years have you been playing for? Yeah, like 28, maybe 29. There you go. Great question. Uh, anybody down here? Okay, let's go to my friends over there. Yeah, go on you. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so this is the classic, right? <laughs> Whenever we go into school, and we go into school a lot, that's the two questions. How long have you been playing? And the next one is always, how old when you started? Because you know what they're going to do, right? <laughs> how old were you when you started? Well, I started with like a folk guitar at home with my dad when I was like six, but then went into classical playing much, much later at 16. There you go. Six, 16, 30. I uh, started with percussion at five and then violin at 11. Percussion? I did not know that about you. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Hence the rhythm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then violin at 11. There you go. You can add those numbers together. Uh, okay, on the screen. What guitar are you playing? Because it's beautiful, oh, says Sean beautiful. in Glasgow. Uh, well, it's a beautiful uh, British guitar by maker Philip Woodfield. I just got it recently, so it's still a, a baby. It's a baby. Sound, yeah. Amazing. Uh, oh, right there. Let's, let's utilize our very posh microphone with a long stick. <laughs> no expense spared. Uh, well, first of all, to say we were enthralled by this music. It's fantastic. And I noticed the sun's shining. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I was interested in what, individually, what was their favorite pieces? That they played. What's uh, from today or just? No, just generally. What's what, your favorite what, piece or pieces? Thank you. Well, just the, the last one that we played, Dilo Chavez. I think it has like a nice connection between both instruments and it's very, very expressive and beautiful melody. There we go. What's your favorite piece? From today. From today or, or whenever? I think I think the, for, for Colombian music, it has to be Dilo Chavez or Bella Vista, all this reflective, you know, kind of slow. Once you hit some age, you start, you know, remembering and being more nostalgic about it. So this connects very well with this right now. And then, yeah, well, a lot of symphonic music as well that we play with the orchestra. And it's very memorable. So many pieces will be here all day. Yeah. There you go. But these guys, clearly, they're deeply nostalgic and romantic, and they like the slow uh, Colombian pieces. Okay, let's have one more from the kids. So you've got your hand up very high. You're right in front of me. Go for it. Shout. How 
How many concerts have you played in? R countries, sorry. How many countries have you played in? Uh, maybe around 20, something like that. Yeah. It's probably, with members of the orchestra, Julian is a member of the London Symphony Orchestra, it's probably easy to say the countries you haven't played in. I, I haven't counted them, I don't know. But it is almost everywhere, isn't it's it? It's a lot. Maybe not Africa, but everywhere else we have played. Yeah. Least continents, yeah. And a few years ago, um, the orchestra toured to Colombia for the first time. That yeah. must have been amazing for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was very, very special for me. Did you have your whole family there? Some of them. <laughs> Some of them, yeah. <laughs> yeah, too big. Uh, brilliant. Let's move on to our last piece. Thank you for your questions. Put your hands down if you're in the balcony. Sorry, I couldn't get to you. Um, our last, before I tell you about the last piece, I'll tell you about the next concert, which is two weeks today on the 3rd of May, and it features our orchestral artistry students from the Guildhall School of Music and Drama. And so that's a chance to hear orchestral musicians at the very beginning of their career. And we've got some great repertoire. We've got Frank Bridge and uh, Mio, a lovely French composer, and my new favorite female composer, Gratzina Bashevic. So that will be in two weeks' time. That one's not streamed, so you'll have to be here live. Uh, our last piece is from an English composer and saxophonist called Andy Scott, and it's called Paquito, and it's an homage to the great saxophonist Paquito de Riviera, and it has been described as being amazingly good. I can't remember the exact quote, but it's something like astonishingly exciting, and then it says that it bounces, and it bubbles, and it boils along, and that is exactly what it does. I really hope you enjoy this. Woo! <laughs> 